Just I want to say a couple of things. One is, um, if you're used to politics at all, um, most politics in America is Tweedledee and Tweedledum. And this election is different because it's not Tweedledee and Tweedledum. This is a real, for real choice. Um, what comes out of this election matters. And you do not have two candidates with similar agendas and similar platforms. And it's just a matter of which flavor do you like best. This is an actual choice between a candidate who is not part of the ruling class of America, who does not have allegiance to the ruling class of America, who is not disguising themselves or whatever happens to fit with the day-to-day -day polling. Bernie Sanders is what he is, and he is who he is. And he's been that way, apparently, for most of his adult life. There's no confusion. He didn't make foreign pl policy blunders and support the Vietnam War when he was in college and the crazy Republican when he was in college and then <laughs> vote for the Iraq War when he was actually in the Senate. He's been on the right side of these issues forever. Other candidates in this race cannot say that. So from my perspective, even as an elected official, this really matters. It matters who wins. It will not be the same day if we wake up and there's a different Democratic candidate representing this party. It is not something that I'm going to feel very good about. Um, and I'm not confused that this isn't really a significant watershed moment in American history. And I really do believe it's a watershed moment, much more so, in fact, than Obama's election, who was only a centrist Democrat at his best anyway. This is the first real choice that has gotten this far in, in my lifetime. And I'm actually old. <laughs> I'm, I'm 65 or something, 66, something like that. So this is a long time. This, this is the first real and genuine opportunity we have to elect somebody with a value system that can take this country forward. Um, and when people talk to you about Bernie Sanders and they, they give you this crap about socialism. His platform looks a lot like what the Democratic Party platform used to look like under Franklin Roosevelt. Yeah. You know, there, there is, I read Roosevelt's, you know, statement on the second bill of rights and listen to the things he was saying. Nothing that Bernie's proposing would have made Roosevelt and Democrats of his time change. And the truth is, it's not that Bernie's not a Democrat, it's that the Democrats aren't Democrats. And the Democrats have abandoned the things they believed in, um, basically to get themselves elected and not to fight for, for working people. And I really think Bernie makes a difference. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm supporting Sanders. I think I'm the only uh, council member who's supporting Sanders and one of a couple of elected officials in the county. But. I would rather offend the power structure to change the national structure than to have the happy power structure and go on with politics as usual. Uh, we cannot afford to do that. And with that said, I want to introduce Sister Simone Campbell. Um, she's a fighter. She's the head of the network group. Um, she was instrumental probably in getting the swing votes that were necessary to pass the, um, the Health Care Act. And she, I think, gets a lot of credit for, would say, outmaneuvering or outsmarting the Catholic bishops. Uh, and, and representing 60 different Catholic organizations um, in, in the fight for social justice. And that's really important. She's a very, very unusual person. Anybody who knows me well um, knows I don't often speak highly of people from a religious perspective, but there are exceptions. And people who really understand that what this fight is about, it's about the here and now, it's about people's actual lives here and now, and the work you've done is about here and now. And I have a lot of respect for that, so I want to introduce her, and uh, you'll have time to ask her questions cool. when she's finished. Um, it's really touching to hear that because um, what I care about are the issues, the policies that affect people. And 
I'm not endorsing any candidate. I'm not against any candidate. I'm not uh, in, uh, in one camp. The camp I'm in is the camp for the American people. The people who have struggled, who work at low wage jobs, who struggle every day to make it. The people who are engaged in caring for family, especially the folks that are in the sandwich generation where they have to worry about parents, in my generation only older, or and kids. Folks who try every day to make a difference, to make education work, to make sure that there's food on the table and that we as a people come together. And I'm here because I care about the issues. And I know that it's Democrats who care about the people. Now, the beloved other party seems to appreciate more name calling, anger, and just plain frustrated rage than engaging with each other. And what I know from our bus trip, some of you know that I've been on a bus that goes around the country. It's the oddest thing in the world, nuns on the bus. Who would think that would take off? But that's what it has. We've done four trips now. And what I've learned at every stop is that there is a hunger for community. There is a hunger to be connected. There is a hunger to know that we're not alone and there's a hunger to be our best selves. Now when we're frightened, when we feel like we're alone, when we feel like no one has our back, then we can have Republican anger. But when we know we're together, then what we have are democratic policies. Policies that say we can care for each other. Policies that say a wage should allow a worker to support his family. Woo, what a shock that you have enough time, as Speaker Ryan negotiated for, to make sure he had time with his family. What a shock. Working should mean that you not only have time with your family and enough to support your family, but that you also are contributing to society. What a shock. Isn't that what we hunger for? It also means that everyone should be able to eat. Food is not a luxury that is discretionary. We all need to eat. And if our children don't eat, they don't learn. And who are we as a nation that might sentence our children to hunger right. and to not learn? <laughs> that is wrong. So I'm here to say, I'm with you. Because together, we make the difference. Together, we speak out. Together, we make sure policies care for the 100%, not just the 1%. The policies we work for care for all. And when we come together, we are our best selves. And in that, well, I do it because of faith. You know, faith matters to me. For me, the gospel, the Christian gospels are all about community. But you know what? The best part of our society is that we meet in the Constitution. We meet in our Constitution regardless of faith. And it says, we the people. We the people of the United States. So we the people. We have work to do. We have an election to struggle through. God help us, praise God, finally, this is the election year. I'm already tired of it, but we have a long way to go. But we can make the difference, because we know it's when we're connected with each other, when we know the needs of each other, when we have our hearts broken open and touched by the stories of each other, that's when we make change, isn't it? That's when we're our best selves. Fear needs to be driven out by <coughs> community. And together, we make that difference. So I'm excited to see this debate. It should be great. Thank you.